It's early February 1943. Central parts of the Mexican state of Michoacán were struck by small but loud earthquakes. It continued for a few weeks. On the 20th of February, however, a farmer called Dionisio were going to sow his fields. Suddenly, an earthquake exactly like the ones that had been in the days prior hit. But this time, it was accompanied by a potent sulfurous smell, like rotten eggs, really. When Dionisio looked, his field was visibly bulged. The growing bulge had cracks venting out gases and spewing ash. Dionisio and the other farmers fled the field, fearing what was to happen. Upon returning the following morning, what was just a bulge the morning before had turned into a hill with a staggering height of 40 meters. This wasn't just a little gaseous bulge, this was the birth of a new mountain, a new volcano. The volcano keeps growing, plaguing the area with cracks in the ground and the foul smell of sulfur. During March, the height of, was, of what was just a bulge, now 200 meters, and it's still growing. For a few farmers in the community, this was a sign to move away. Many others were probably thinking of doing the same. The ones that stayed got plagued by flying volcanic debris and a lot of ash. You see that? That is not snow, mate. The small volcanic debris was called lapilli and looked a bit like this, and the bigger ones were called bombs and looked like this. They are pretty big, eh? And by the way, these can fly up to multiple kilometers. While people were busy considering leaving Perikutin or the area in general, two outsiders moved in. It was Dr. Gennaro Gonzalez Arena and William F. Forshak, both were geologists from Mexico and the US. They were here to study this newly birthed volcano. And this bit of research suddenly turned exciting. On the 12th of June, flows of lava streamed towards the village of Perdicutin. This forced evacuations of the village, with a population of 733, before the eruption started. By October, the volcano reached a height of 365 meters. The formation of lateral vents on the side of the volcano concludes the first phase and introduces, introduces the second phase, known as a child in the local language, Repetia. Due to the birth of these vents and multiple new openings on the northern side of the volcano, these vents and openings spewed out a new lava flow, much greater than the first, going straight towards the town of San Juan. It became clear that San Juan should be evacuated because it would without a doubt meet the same fate as Perdicutin. The miraculous evacuation of both San Juan and Perdicutin went without lo any loss of life. And actually it turns out the only loss of life were actually eruption triggered lightning strikes that hit three unfortunate jets. But it really is a miracle though because I like to compare this to Vesuvius in ancient Italy just because it buries these villages um, that was, well, that was another magnitude I. Eh? But lasting just around a year, these first two phases were accountable for 90% of all ejected material and yes, if you're wondering, that lava flow, while all the material is out, it's still flowing San Juan continues to be buried, and there is increasing activity in the center of the volcano. By August, the entire town of San Juan is buried. Only the ruins of the church peek up. It looks sort of post-apocalyptic. However, through the year, activity slows down, bringing us to... With activity diminishing, the professional geologists Dr. G Gennaro and William F. Fauché decides to leave, and incidents reporting is left with the locals. While the activity was quite limited by now, the occasional spew out of ash or gases or a li little bit of lava sometimes still occurred. 
sometime in late January 1952. The last activity of the volcano was recorded by Theodonio Gutierrez, who was responsible for keeping an eye on the volcano after the geologist left. Finalizing at 424 meters, which is a prominence of 208 meters, the volcano is at this point considered dead. While the story of Pericotine is highly interesting, a bit scary and fantastic in many ways. To science, it was a breakthrough. It was the first time that geologists ever got to study the entire life cycle of a volcano. From the very birth to the very death, that is. It went from growing in a cornfield to spanning an area of 25 square kilometers, swallowing two towns, or sorry, two settlements in its way. It's an incredible story, really. Fascinating, at least. And on that note, I would like to conclude this video. I want to thank you guys for watching, and um, I would love some feedback. I'm quite new to all this video stuff. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, then please give it a, consider giving it a like. And if you want to see anything like this, then please consider subscribing. That's all folks.